Uhuru Kenyatta owns a property, a cottage somewhere, and you buy the cottage next to, next to him. And when they call a neighbor's association, you can sit around the same table, and you can tell him, by the way, you know, I need, uh, I need one of the contracts that you are... <laughs> association, right? Yeah? You can own a, home, a second home, a holiday home. That's when you start considering this, this, type, of, uh, this type of assets. And, and a couple of other things. I know I have one client who really, who really impressed me. He told me, Piers, I hate driving old cars. Yeah? He told me, I want my, to change my car every two to three years. And I want you to plan it in my portfolio. Every two to three years, I will trade in my car and the portfolio will meet the balance. And it will not just be for me, it will be for me and my wife. And I thought, this is exactly why I invest. Yeah? To enjoy life, to have to live to live life to the uh, to the fullest. I said, why not? So, aspirational portfolio. That is one side of aspirational portfolio. It also brings another side of you, where you realize, you know what? I have I have food, I have shelter, I have all these things. I have my my retirement sorted out. I have home. I have my kids. I have gone to school. There's only so much I can do for myself. Now, you start thinking, how, what impact will I leave in the society that I came from? And therefore, you start setting up a philanthropic portfolio. And that's where we come in. We help you to have a very clear a strategy for your philanthropy and also make sure that it's sustainable. So it doesn't have to be something that is grandiose. It's just, I just want to help. I have a passion for young people with great ideas but have no money to commercialize those ideas. I want just a million shilling to be going towards them. Or I want to be supporting a particular children's home with my family. And it's going to be costing me 500,000 every half year. And I want to go and show my kids how to be good citizens. So the 500,000 comes from your portfolio and you go and you do what you need to do. But it does not take your wealth downwards. That's the key. Once you build your wealth here, you keep, it should never go down. That's why this is in a step. You get to your 10 million, never go beyond, below that. Get to your 100 million, never go below that. Never ever allow your portfolio to be consumed. Consume the, the, the results that come from the portfolio, or the fruit that come from the portfolio, not the portfolio itself. So that's your third one. Finally, is a legacy portfolio. Here, you start thinking beyond yourself. And there are two important questions that you have to answer. Because everybody is mortal. One day we must transition somewhere else. Who will, this portfolio that you have so deliberately built, will it outlast you and for how many generations? So two questions. Number one, who will inherit it? Who will inherit you? And number two, how will they inherit you? And this is a, it sounds like a very simple question, but we've actually found it to be very complex. Because, one, in terms of who will inherit, who will continue overseeing that portfolio, we found two things. One, well, the majority of the wealthy people we've come across they either don't believe that their children are capable of overseeing their portfolio, yeah, or their children are completely not interested. So it is not obvious that your son will continue from where you, you left, and therefore, how do you, how will you continue with that, with that, with that, uh, with that portfolio? And so. It can be put in a trust. It can be put in a vehicle where it continues to, the, the income from that portfolio continues to be distributed to the beneficiaries without necessarily them being in charge of that particular portfolio. And that's why you need a partnership with, a, with an investment manager. And that's what big families do out there. They set up family offices. And the whole idea about family office is to make sure that the wealth lasts for generations to come.
two is uh, depending on how you answer who will inherit you then you also it also influences how how you will in, uh, they will inherit you and that's why i said if for example your kids are not interested in continuing what you've been doing then you can set up a trust or something or a vehicle that is appropriate to make sure that the wealth continues to be managed professionally and only the benefit economic benefits of that wealth are passed on or are distributed on a regular basis to the people that you wish to and some people have very noble ideas like you know this portfolio will just ensure that all the children that come down the generations will never lack education uh, and they give it a purpose yeah so just to recap, two things that I believe you must do for you to be able to transition from active income to passive income. One, you must open an, an, in, an investment account, wherever. Two, you must, uh, you must start investing with a strategy. Not, hey, you know, there is a plot of land that is being sold in, in, uh, in Namanga and you say, I am run, I'm dashing there you have to think very deliberately, why am I investing? Why am I putting this coin in this asset? And be able to sort that out. And the key, the key thing here is cash. Don't invest in anything that does not give you return of cash. Anything that gives, doesn't give you cash is dead asset, is dead asset. And we are very prone to committing our hard-earned money to dead assets. Okay?